right? All right, all right. Hey, are we good? I'm just gonna do this thing again where it takes like a few minutes. All right, there we go. I think we're live, y'all. I think we're good to go. Hey, check into the stream if you guys are tuned in. Welcome, welcome. Comment where you guys are tuned in from. I'm live here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hello, everybody. Just sharing the stream out now. Getting the stream shared on Facebook, getting the stream shared on Twitter. Pull up your guys' comments here in a second. Right. And we're live. Hello, hello. There we go. All right, cool. We're on. Perfect. We're good to go. We got Florida tuned in. Comment where you're tuning in from. I don't have the intro video or anything like that. Can you guys hear me well? Oh yeah, I sound like I'm traveling for sure. I got the I got the the traveling mic that makes me sound weird. Oh yeah, we're in big big rapids, Michigan. How you doing, Val Spiro, Indiana? Just tuned in. Welcome, y'all. I'm here live. Again, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, covering the protests and demanding police accountability and justice for the killing of Patrick Leoya. So let's just get into it. World news updates. Russia has begun deploying aviation support, command and control and artillery units in the Russian towns of Ravenki and Volyuki around Ukraine's Donbass for coming offensive. Senior U.S. official, Russia is putting in support for ground operations to come in Donbass. Key residents have reported hearing explosions on Monday, excuse me, on Friday, following the announcement that Russia's Moscow warship had sunk in the Black Sea. Reuters and BBC report the Russian Defense Ministry said that cru cruise missiles have hit a plant making anti aircraft and anti ship missiles in the Kiev suburb of Zelany on Friday. That new strikes against the Ukrainian capital will follow. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm glad you're joining. The U.S. believes that Russian crater Moskva was 30 nautical miles off the Black Sea coast when fire started and well within range of Ukrainian Neptune anti-ship cruise missiles, senior U.S. defense official. The U.S. is not confirm confirming that Ukraine struck the Moskva with anti-ship missiles, so there's no confirmation from the United States of that. Forbes, Ukraine. Russian destroyed Navy missile cruiser Moskva worth $750 million. Ukraine has destroyed 5,260 units of Russian military equipment, but the Black Sea flagship is Russia's most expensive loss, Forbes Ukraine reported. Russia sends India early delivery of another S-400 air defense system four days after Biden spoke to Modi and India's top diplomat and defense chief met their American counterparts in Washington. Some um, uh, national news here in the United States. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has signed a 15-week abortion ban into law. The move comes amid a growing conservative push to restrict abortion ahead of a U.S. Supreme Court decision that could limit access to the procedure nationwide. <clears throat> Elon Musk offered Thursday to buy out Twitter for $54.20 per share in an all-cash deal, saying the company needs to be transformed according to an SEC filing. Elon Musk has been bumped off the perch as Twitter's largest shareholder. Asset manager Vanguard Group recently upped its stake in the, in the social media platform and now owns 82.4 million shares of Twitter, or 10.3% of the company. Twitter rebuffed Elon Musk's takeover bid with a so-called poison bill that would flood the market with new shares if he buys 15% of its stock. Musk currently owns more than 9%. Your sound sounds different. Yes, I'm using a, a mobile. I don't have my big mic set up. I'm on a laptop and I got, this is my mic right here. But yeah, I do sound like I'm in a tin can. Violent riots have broke out in Linpoing, Sweden. One or more cars are on fire and stones are being thrown at the police. This is in connection with the Danish right-wing politician Rasmus Bludan's planned speech in the city where he said that a Quran would be burned. Homeland Security Department says it will temporarily shield people from deportation back to Cameroon saying extreme violence between government forces and armed separatists make it unsafe for them to return. Yes, I'm in a hotel room. Newly uncovered text shows Senator Mike Lee beginning the Trump White House making for talking points to justify stealing the election in November of 2020. Please give me something to work with. I just need to know what I should be saying. Please tell me what I should be saying. So we got new uncovered texts from the 
the inquiry looking into the election again. Which, by the way, I think Biden won Arizona for the seventh or eighth time now. They're, they're doing investigations on that still. All right, so that's the, the breakdown of the big stories of the day. Let's hop into, let's hop into it. All right, this is the the big one of the day right here, though. Or the big one of the last few days, as you guys can see, the the, the Moskva right there. <laughs> that's a joke right there, by the way. That's not a, this is a Photoshopped picture. I don't want anybody to be like, oh, my God, he's sharing something literally fake. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's the Moskva being being uh taken out of the sea by a John Deere. <clears throat> They're crowdfunding for another battleship. It might take them a little while. It might take them a little while. Moscow being being uh taken out of the hotel setup is pretty decent. I mean it's the best we can do. You know what I mean? Best we got going on. Let's check our list. I don't have my big computer at home. This is laptop work. What is that? Why is cats in weird places? <laughs> what? Why is cats in weird places on our Ukraine war? Oh, it was retweeted. Well, here's a cat in the toilet for y'all. There you go. That's where we're starting. All clear. We got siren alerts. We got siren alerts in Kiev City. It's all clear. Okay. Let's go. What do we got? Explosion was heard in Kiev during an air raid warning this morning. I don't have the local time in Kiev right now. I don't have any of that stuff. Let's check this out. How oh, are you guys are tuning in from? Uh, we got explosion was heard in Kiev during an air raid this morning. Yeah. So. an explosion there be heard <clears throat> I didn't hear an explosion until 19 seconds this was in Kiev City today st. Louis representing how y'all doing I'm streaming here from Grand Rapids Michigan Guys could hear that explosion. There it was. It is now 7 a.m. So okay, good. I got my bearings. It's 7:23 in the morning. Then, on the 52nd day of the Russian invasion of the capital city of Kiev, it's been more than one month yet. Ukraine. What about day 51? Okay, let's go to John. Let's get the update on from John real quick. He'll know what. He'll know what to say. Hope you guys had a fantastic evening. Again, I'm live here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's why it kind of sounds different. Go to John's latest day 51, you say. Eve diary, day 51. There it is. Let's see. Did we catch 50? We did, because I was live. I was live. You see this? Oh my goodness, there's so many now. We saw him dancing on the table. I remember that. We saw that. I have a song for that now, by the way. <clears throat> when, when I get back home, I'll have it ready to go. All right, here's John in, on April 14th, so yesterday. Day 50. Here he is, and then we'll watch Day 51 in case you guys missed it. Day 50 of Vladimir Putin's war. The electricity is still on. The internet is still on. There are no Russian tanks on my street crochetic or anything like it, and I'm still wearing my lucky orange hat. Yesterday, the Ukrainians zapped a Russian warship Moskva. Uh, Russians are saying it's been damaged and uh, a tugboat or something is towing it. So, the 
story of the war continues. Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is asking for heavy metal. Oh, Vladimir Putin, do fuck off. It's the air raid siren. I can't see it being serious. Um, but who knows? Anyway, Zelensky wants heavy metal tanks. The British Ministry of Defence can't supply the tanks. I suspect they think it's because British tanks drive on the left-hand side of the road. It doesn't make any sense to me. Excuse me, Mr. Putin, can you please be quiet? Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, yeah. I know it's loud. Let me figure this out. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Got the air raid going off. <clears throat> All right. I think this should be better. The video's loud. I know. I don't have my awesome studio set up like I do at home. Let me see if this is better. I know, guys. I know it's loud. The story of the war continues. Let so me know if that's better for you. All right. Let's, I'm going to play that now. Let me try it again. Kiev Dari, day 50 of Vladimir Putin's war. The electricity is still on, the internet is still That sounds way better. That sounded way better. All right. Still on. Oh on. Kiev Dari, day 50 of Vladimir Putin's war. The electricity is still on, the internet is still on. There are no Russian tanks on my street, Chris Shattuck. Better y'all? Like right, thank you, I'm Chad. still wearing my lucky orange hat. Yesterday, you... That's good? Awesome. Please, thank you. Here's money for your motel room. I saw a coke. You hit. You saw like a roach on the wall. All right. My bad, y'all. I had it. I, the audio wasn't perfect yet. I'm on a laptop, so I'm not on anything. It's good now. All right. Here we go. Ukrainians zapped a Russian warship Moskva. <clears throat> uh, Russians are saying it's been damaged and. Uh, Tugboat or something is towing it. So bloody well done, chaps. The story of the war continues. Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is asking for heavy metal. Oh, Vladimir Putin, do fuck off. It's the air raid siren. I can't see it being serious. Um, but who knows? Anyway, Zelensky wants heavy metal tanks the British Ministry of Defence can't supply the tanks I suspect they think it's because British tanks drive on the left hand side of the road it doesn't make any sense to me excuse me Mr Putin can you please be quiet I'm speaking so give the Ukrainians the tools and they can finish the job but what's important, I think, is to try and understand the psychology of Vladimir Putin. And that's why I've made this podcast, Taking on Putin. The third episode is out now. And that is called One Lump or Two. And it investigates the number of people who've been poisoned, not just in Britain, but also in Russia, who were critics of Vladimir Putin. And I investigate why the West and the authorities in Britain kept on ignoring Putin, kept on appeasing him. Listen to the podcast. If you can crowdfund it, that's great. Um, anyway, love from Kiev. All right, that's John in Kiev. That was from yesterday. Let's go to his newest today. At day 51, spring for Ukraine. This is his diary. 51 of Vladimir Putin's war. I'm in Taras Shevchenko Square in the center of Kiev. Uh, it's getting warm. Spring is in the air. The trees are budding. It's very beautiful and peaceful. Down south, Maripol, in the east. Hey, you pull. I gotta pull up the. Okay, I don't even have my map on here. 
I can find it. On. <clears throat> I view a map. Pull up our handy dandy map here. All right, what do we got going here? Mary, you pull down here. Southeastern port city. Only one remaining on along the, the southern and eastern port. All right, Mary, you pull. My laptop's being slow. How the war continues. But to be fair, the much feared Russian offensive hasn't happened yet. I think the reason for that is because the Russian army, from its generals to its lowliest private, isn't that keen on this war. And they know that if they come to Ukraine, they may well die. And in particular, soldiers in tanks and armored cars, they may well fry. And they know that now, and so um, they're not keen. Where does this leave the master of the Kremlin? A, a much diminished figure um, after the Ukrainians sank his flagship in the Black Sea. Uh, the Admiral has been arrested and there's a lesson, isn't there, for everybody in Russia's military. You have been placed in an impossible position Go fight the Ukrainians, but your soldiers and your sailors don't want to fight. And you haven't got your kit because there's been so much corruption. The right kind of kit, it doesn't work properly. And therefore you start losing. And because you lose, you're a traitor. And Vladimir Putin gets you locked up and turned over by the secret police, the FSB. At some point the wheels will come off the Kremlin's bus. All we can hope for here is that um, that happens sooner rather than later. I don't think that Vladimir Putin is going to hit the nukes, I don't at all. I still think he's a rational actor, but with a diminished vision of the world, let's hope that that vision gets more diminished by the day. All right, let's hope that hope gets diminished by the day. This is John Sweeney one more time. I play videos twice just because I know there's people that just started tuning in now. Again, I'm live here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, streaming the war coverage. Guys, comment where you're tuning in from if you're just joining. I hope you guys had a fantastic day. I am here in a, in a hotel room. I'm not at home. I'll be back on Sunday. I'll be back home on Sunday. So that's why my mic sounds funny. That's why things don't look normal, right? Kiev diary, day 51 of Vladimir Putin's war. I'm in Taras Shevchenko Square in the center of Kiev. Uh, it's getting warm. Spring is in the air. Trees are budding. It's very beautiful and peaceful. Down south, Maripol, in the east, the hell of war continues. But to be fair, the much feared Russian offensive hasn't happened yet. I think the reason for that is because the Russian army, from its generals to its lowliest private, isn't that keen on this war. And they know that if they come to Ukraine, they may well die. And in particular, soldiers in tanks and armored cars, they may well fry. And they know that now, and so um, they're not keen. Where does this leave the master of the Kremlin? A, a much diminished figure um, after the Ukrainians sank his flagship in the Black Sea. Uh, the Admiral has been arrested and there's a lesson, isn't there, for everybody in Russia's military. You have been placed in an impossible position. It's May 9th. <clears throat> Is my, is my microphone too quiet? May 9th is the anniversary. All right, hold on. Let me just see if I can... I can probably turn mine up a little bit. Hold on. Filters. I'm too quiet. Hold on. All right. Turn me up a little bit. How about that? No, too much. Is that better? 
Maybe like there. How about that? Testing, testing. How's that audio? Is that better? Testing, testing. That might be a little better right there. All right. Go fight the Ukrainians, but your soldiers and your sailors don't want to fight. That's better. And you haven't got your kit. That makes that's better. Awesome. Because there's been so much corruption, the right kind of kit, it doesn't work properly, and therefore you start losing. And because you lose, you're a traitor. And Vladimir Putin gets you locked up and turned over by the secret police, the FSB. At some point, the wheels will come off the Kremlin's bus. All we can hope for here is that um, that happens sooner rather than later. I don't think that Vladimir Putin is going to hit the nukes, I don't at all. I still think he's a rational actor, but with a diminished vision of the world, let's hope that that vision gets more diminished by the day. All right. <clears throat> Don Sweeney, what is this here? Oh, that was from 50. All right. Um, okay, we got explosions. Internet's going to be loading a little slower. Got to get a new laptop. That's what I'm learning. New laptop is in order. Let's go to my profile, see what we've shared from today. Oh, this was from Scootercaster via, uh, via Twitter of a rave in Lviv taking place. Scooter was there. Scooter's from Ukraine, has been there a few times back. We were tuned into her reporting at the start of the invasion when people were evacuating. So we have some more reporting back. Definitely follow Scootercaster on Twitter, y'all. Here's Lviv on the map. That's in Western Ukraine near Poland. So here's Lviv over here. So things are starting to, or uh, try to return to normal. Here's Lviv. Leave, thank you so much. Boots on the ground, match this, he says. Lviv, over here on the western side of Ukraine. As Lviv continues to reopen and come alive, Diki Dim organized the first electronic type party since the war began, organized by people who had been volunteering throughout the war. They will be donating proceeds to further help volunteers and Ukraine. <laughs> Like a bunker rave. Oh yeah, <clears throat> I knew this one was going to be bad no matter what my audio was. I knew this one was going to be loud no matter what my audio was. So they had to rave. So emotionally, you know... Oh, let's go back. Oh, I didn't know she was doing interviews. Alright, here we go. Yeah, it looks like they do. Emotionally, you know, like all of us are, are feeling pretty, you know, depressed because of the war and, you know, it, this is just a way to keep hope alive, right, because, you know, Ukraine is known for its art, it's an incredible art and artists. And, and the fundraising side, you know, it's just, it's just another way to get money and the way we get money is doing what we do best. Alright, more from Scooter today. Refresh. There we go. People asking. Oh, oh, there's a whole thread right here. Animals left behind war in Ukraine rescued by volunteers. So people have been asking this. And I think Scooter touches on it. Uh, animal rescue and of volunteers at Domivka in Lviv 
are swamped ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, leaving many animals who managed to survive helpless. We have 200 dogs from Kyiv overall from the war, 800 animals in Lviv. <laughs> I think we have 200 dogs from uh, uh, from Kyiv, from this directory, and, uh, and about all the times of war, I think we have 800 animals, cats and dogs. <laughs> It, it makes me like so sad, even sometimes I can cry because I don't understand why people are, are, are just leaving them. Because they are part, you know, uh, for us, animals are just uh, part of our lives. But uh, for animals, we're all of their, all their life. Woman who like owner of these uh, cats going to the Kharkiv take all these cats and bring here and go to the Europe. Yeah. How long were they alone? Uh, they alone in the apartment one month and uh, uh, here they just one day. All right. <clears throat> Let's continue on the thread of them. Yeah, and ever since the attack on Ukraine have escalated, killing civilians and destroying homes in cities like Kharkiv, Irpin, and Bucha, the animal shelter have been receiving new arrivals every day. Sometimes I cry because I can't understand why people are just leaving them. This is reporting from ScooterCaster on Twitter. Definitely add ScooterCaster to your list of Ukraine coverage if you haven't. i to make it larger. Internet's a little laggy. Like the stream if you guys haven't. Shout out to... Shout out to Thomas. Here's a 10 spot. Thank you. And then shout out Daniel. Get it going. Thank you. I'm shocked when um, when I read some stories about animals who were closed in their at homes in the flats and uh, like because uh, when a dog when a dog is on the street uh, so uh, it probably can find some food or I don't know some water but when this animal is just like closed and it, it's it's like it, it means that it will die like in 30 days or 20 i don't know like a lot of parrots uh, uh, mice uh, i don't know rats uh, even fish were left well and it's it's like it's so sad <laughs> We think this is not Putin is bad. No, bad all this. Not not Putin uh, like shooting these dogs, um, rape uh, women. This do soldiers of this bastard. So yeah. Um. Also, also we know that uh, they eat dogs and eat cats. Yeah. People who like uh, have animals, uh, they they must to take care about these animals, and also they can because they uh, can uh, bring this animal here because we don't have so many problems with war and we can carry on these animals. And also you can bring these animals to the Europe and in the Europe uh, many organizations who want adopted your animals if you, if you cannot uh, do something with this. People who can go here, volunteer in cleaning a cage, uh, go for a walk with dogs, uh, sorting the animals' food, uh, also bring some food to us, uh, uh, dogs, cats, uh, horses. Uh. Right, continuing. <clears throat> and one and one bird we already have. Uh, they name Hala. I show you. Uh, she from Kharkiv. It's uh, eagle. It's like commercial birds. She like making photo with people for money, 
and when the war is starting, uh, owner of this birds call us and told about they don't carry on these uh, birds and they want to go. Uh, so they like put these birds in the small cage and um, deliver from the train, and these birds go to us three days in the small cage. I'm shocked when. Um, when I read some stories about animals who were closed in their at homes in the flats, and uh, like because uh, when a dog when a dog is on the street, uh, so uh, it probably can find some food or I don't know some water, but when this animal is just like closed, and it, it's it's like it, it means that it will die like in 30 days or 20 I don't know like a lot of parrots, uh, uh, mice, uh, I don't know rats, uh, even fish were left. Well, and it's it's like it's so sad. We think this is not Putin is bad. No, bad all this. Not not Putin uh, like shooting these dogs, um, rape uh, women. This do soldiers of this bastard. So yeah. Also, also we know that uh, they eat dogs and eat cats. Yeah. Куре вивозили, коли поляки евакуювали з тварин, то вивезли одразу і купили. That is in Lviv. <coughs> so that's going on in the city of Lviv in Ukraine. Some new stuff. Geo confirmed. What is all uh, Geo confirmation of Rubenzine Luhansk after the arrival of the Russians? Is there a picture? Video. This is what Rubenzine, the Luhansk region, looks like after the arrival of the Russians. 5 32 a.m. This was posted on or this morning. So this is from a well, video from yesterday, it would have been, but I wasn't live yesterday. Rubenzine. Up where that is. What about the zoo? There's st there's still animals there. There's all right Sever north of Severin Donetsk, right where the red, right where the red marker is. One more time. This is Rubenzine. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Leah.
All right. Thank you, Leah. Thank you, Thomas. And Tim. Thank you, y'all. Oh, my goodness. Cleve. Cleve, you're the man. Geo, was this, this was geolocated. Cleve, as promised. At the location of the video. Thank you, Cleve. So it rolls through here. Don't really have a location to go to. Vehicle there? No, that's the beach. It's like up and up, up there more. Can't really. I can't put my marker on the street. Not this one, but it was geo confirmed. Rhonda, oh my goodness, thank you so much. It was geo confirmed in the in Rubenzine right here. Okay, so there's some geo confirmation from a satellite. That's the one thing we can do, I suppose, huh? We got satellite imagery. Let's roll through here. Well, that, the vehicle's rolling through here. Wow. We do have satellite imagery of it, but I don't have, I can't do uh, street cam. That's not going to happen. So that's what the, the satellite imagery looks like. And one more time, the video, this is what it looks like now. Got a picture. Got a picture. It rolling through here. There, it looks like there's a some type of trucking or construction compound there. More truck, more trucks here. Residentials in here. Residentials on this part of the street. You got a highway. Zoom out. Small riverbed, but it looks like industrial businesses over here on the on the left side of the street, and then residentials on the right. <clears throat> I'm traveling for no, I'm I'm in uh, I am in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan, covering a protest, and I'll be I'll be here till Sunday. I'll sh Oops. Hit the wrong button. Played it too soon. Not going anywhere yet. What it looks like now. All right, so that's geo confirmed from satellite imagery from the top down geo location. Let's continue on. So much going on, it's hard to keep up. Tell me about it. I'm trying to see if there's any other video that's geo confirmed. Here we go. This was from April 14th, so I definitely missed it yesterday. The first half of a video of what looks like a Russian T-72 B-3 tank firing down on Buzova. Oh, let's start here. Interesting old footage from Buzova. How old? Videos are loading slow. Well, they're not loading slow, but pulling up this page is. On the 13th, oh, that's two, I mean, I haven't seen this. This is two days old. I haven't seen this. Some of you guys might have that have been tuned in. Even without me. 
Margaret, thank you so much, Margaret. Interesting footage from the 13th showing Buzova, from Buzova, showing a Russian T-72 B-3 tank firing on the town while a sniper team observed from the building's rooftop. All right. Three days, you're right. Yep, it'd be three days there, yeah. You're right. Oh wow. What's the tank doing? Just just out there firing on the city? Aloha from Maui. Thank you, Lynette. No audio to this stream or to this video. Smile. Look how far away it is, and the camera can this is whatever camera this is can zoom in. Katie, thank you, Snack Squad. Remember to like the video if you haven't already. Thank you, Katie. Protest coverage can be found here on YouTube and on Facebook. Got the V on it. Clive, thank you. Cleave. And he said Clive. I read that. Cleave. This is a tank in Buzova. Where is that? Cleave, my goodness. Uh, killing this, killing it with the super chats tonight. Thank you so much. I'm get, it said, I'm guessing in Kharkiv. Which Buzova? There's a few. This one definitely has farmland in it. Oh, no, nope, it's Kharkiv. That's definitely Kharkiv. Bushmaster vehicles are on the ground. Bob, thank you. Alan, oh my goodness. Cleve, you done started something. Cleve, you done started something. Thank you. Boozova. Oh my goodness. Kyle, camera guy. Wow. Nice to meet you today. Tuned in from Grand Rapids. Thank you so much, Kyle. Boozova, y'all. It's definitely this one. Definitely. Big open area. Second half of the video. Y'all are, are on it tonight. Thank you. Oh, really? Yep, they did geolocate it. Bet you it's going to be this one. If I'm wrong, I'm going to be mad. Ah, I was wrong. Where the heck is this? Oh, I was wrong. On, oh, hey, I was over 2. Good thing I got the geolocation. Where is this? This is right here. The sniper team is watching from this building. The corner right here. That's where the sniper team is. The camera's like 
I don't know, the camera's in this area. The tank's in here. Now, where is this? Zoom out. Uzova. Kiev. It's the Kiev one. All right. Sniper team on this building here in the corner. Tank running around in here shooting at this city. That sniper team we see is on that corner of the building right there. Shout out to the person in the chat. Uh, shout it out the geolocation. Just a Tiva tonight to get me through the stream. I was gonna start. I was gonna crack open a monster, but I don't want to be up all night. I gotta be up early. There's a, apparently a. There's a vigil in Lansing, Michigan tomorrow. And I'm not quite sure how far that is or how far away. But I got to wake up and it's at noon. Wandering, welcome to the channel. Welcome. Is that one and a half hour? Okay, that's not bad then. We're delivering the facts. Relevant and accurate information, Daniel. Thank you so much for that. Maybe 45 minutes. Y'all don't have to tell us what to eat in Lansing for lunch. Told Maxwell about it. All right, I'm still going. Yeah, we're likely going together. Thank you to everybody that is donating. Again, you know, this is a viewer supported and viewer funded stream. I'm not sponsored. I am not sponsored by anyone except for you guys. So thank you everybody that is sending the super chats and stickers, completely optional. You don't feel obligated to do it. You don't have to. The stream is a public stream. Thank you, everybody, for supporting. Let's continue on. You guys are the ones that help me continue my reporting, like being here in Grand Rapids. Video of a Russian T-72 B-3 tank firing on Ukrainian positions in Mariupol. Geo confirmed. So... Let's do, let's do this. Let's do video, then geolocation, then video again a couple more times, all right? I know my mind is a little scatterbrained. Forgive me. I'm back out doing what I do, all right? So let's do video. Then I'm going to geolocate it and show you guys where it is on the map, and then we'll watch the video again. That'll be the process. Here we go. I'm already in I'm already in Grand Rapids. 
I'm not in Minnesota right now. I've been here since yesterday. I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Thank you, Wanderling. Wandering Wombat, thank you. All right, video, geolocation. This is in Mariupol. Maybe we'll get a specific spot. I'm already in Grand Rapids, so it won't be that far. The drive yesterday was, oh my goodness, the wind. After I, after the Dells, listen, after the Dells, I was gripping my steering wheel so tight. I've never had more anxiety driving before. I have a truck and my truck was still like getting tossed. Like it was anxiety, anxiety traffic for sure. The whole, the, from the Dells through the rest of the, until around the other side of Lake Michigan. It was very windy. So here it is. The tank is right here. Shooting out of this corridor of the buildings. This is Mariupol. It's to the right or to the east of Mariupol, eastern portion of the city. Is this under Russian control or let's see where this is? On the east on the eastern portion of the city. Oh. No, it's not. It's a Russian video, Russian tank, but it's in non Russian controlled territory of Mariupol. All right? So geolocation of this video is here in Mariupol to the eastern the eastern side of the city. All right? One more time. So the tank is in between these two buildings. So it's right here and it's firing out like this way. There's no way we're going to get a street view. No, Air Upol's like shut down. There's like, here, this is the only street. No, there's one over here. I wonder if we can, likely not. Dang, here's Mariupol normally. There's not many street cameras left of the city. Or uh, there's, I mean, Google cams like this. This was in 2018. And th that tank is right down the street, like right in there. Like this is the furthest I can go. This is Mariupol without it being all gray and war-torn. Wandering Wombat, thank you again so much. Thank you, chat, for the super chats, for real. I'll see. Challenge accepted. Oh, oh, did Cleve challenge the chat? Thank you, Kathy. Look at this. Look at how nice. Look at how Mariupol is just full of pine trees in the middle of a city. I found that to be so unique. It's like they have they have cities, but yet they have like rural trees that you would find not in the city. Like if imagine if you just saw many in Minneapolis, just pine trees in Minneapolis, like in the city. You got like a mixture of like forest and city together. And that's so sad that it's turned to this. Look at all those trees. This is where that tree line is. All these dead trees right here in the middle. That's where all that is. All the smoke you can't even see down the street. So this tank, this tank here in Mariupol is down the street that way. It's down here. All these beautiful trees there. Look at that street signs.
and yeah, leave the goat challenge. You can kind of see the trees in the middle. Continue on. You don't need to watch the whole thing again. That was geolocated position. Where's this now? 19 hours. A window into twisted. Oh, this one I saw. So trucks and bulldozers with Z's have pulled up to cemeteries where victims of the Catton Massacre, which we're going to need to look up the history of that, are buried in Russia. They use loudspeakers to announce they could demolish the graves, but won't because they are good. Naturally, they perpetrate. Per Purported revisionist propaganda about the 2,200 murdered Polish POWs. The 2,200, yeah. By stating they are willing to ignore the issue of who really killed the Poles and under what circumstances, insinuating that it was the Germans after all and not the Soviets. Liars. Russia deranged acts also raised the issue on whether Poland should exhume the 2,200 murder victims once again and give them a final resting place in Poland. These are Polish, Polish prisoners of war that are buried in Russia. And r trucks and bulldozers with the Z symbol showed up and said that they could desecrate the, 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 the burial ground, but they won't because they're good. This is like elementary school level, like, this is what we're taught. Oh my dude, I just can't even. Offy, thank you for keeping us all. Thank you for keeping us all informed and boots on the ground. Thank you. And proud Canadian, thank you. Plenty. That's plenty, proud Canadian, thank you. Мы находимся под Смоленском на Катанском мемориале. Это место священное для многих поляков. Здесь похоронены предки некоторых из вас. Мы сейчас не будем разбираться, кто в действительности и когда расстрелял здесь польских солдат и офицеров. Но мы хотим заявить, что мы уважаем ваше захоронение, ваши святыни, находящиеся на нашей земле. Здесь стоит строительная техника, которая может снести этот мемориал. Но мы... Люди, а не нацисты. Мы не станем этого делать. Мы не воюем с чужими святынями. А ваши политики уничтожают памятники солдатам и офицерам Красной Армии, погибшим при освобождении Польши от нацистов. was a series of mass ex executions of nearly 22,000 Polish military officers and intel intelligence prisoners of war carried out by the Soviet... Is there a video? How often do you think about your poop? <laughs> oh, God. Great. Wonderful commercial we get. Why do I even have commercials right now? What in the fuck? My bad. I didn't have my I didn't have my premium account on my Prime or whatever the hell. I don't know what what is this called? YouTube Premium. My bad. So many damn subscriptions now. YouTube Prime.
demanding that Hitler halt world war, when nine, setting in motion the outbreak of a much bigger world war, when, on the 3rd of September, Britain and France, after demanding that Hitler halt his military action, declared war on Germany, as per an agreement they had with Poland. That's the narrative of the beginning of World War II in Europe. But a fifth player is often left out of the story. The Soviet Union. Poland and the USSR had no love for one another. In fact, in 1919-21, the Poles had fought the Soviets over western Ukraine and defeated the Red Army at Warsaw. The Poles possessed a massive and oh, well-trained army. In 1939, this amounted to one and three-quarter million regular troops, plus a further half a million in reserve. But the Polish military also had some terrible weaknesses that the Germans would exploit during their invasion, notably an over-reliance on horsed cavalry and too few modern tanks, and out-of-date artillery and fire control equipment. Its air force was also third class in comparison to the German Luftwaffe. But the Poles were very tough and determined fighters, and the Germans knew that they would have a serious fight on their hands. Hitler had a secret weapon to undermine the Poles. Stalin. In a breathtaking piece of diplomatic intrigue, Hitler concluded a non-aggression pact with the Soviet Union a few days before the invasion of Poland. <coughs> Given all that Hitler had said about the Soviet Union and communism over the past 20 years, most Germans were as surprised as the Polish, British and French by this apparent double standard. I forgot about that. I forgot that they did that. And then Hitler was the one that went behind, like, dude, so the Russians could have very as, listen, the Russians could have just as well have been a part of the Axis powers as they were, like, with the Allies in World War Two. The pact included a secret... They were on a fringe, they were on the line. Secret clause whereby, working in cooperation with the German forces invading from the west, Stalin would unleash an invasion of Poland from the east. east. Dude. By the 17th of September 1939, the Polish forces had been pushed back by the German Blitzkrieg and started massing their remaining forces south and west of the capital, Warsaw. They also moved into a tongue of Polish territory that stuck out between Romania and Hungary, both friendly nations. The plan was to hold out until Britain and France somehow came to Poland's aid. The French, as I have covered in another video, link in the end screen, launched a rather desultory Tsar offensive into a part of Western Germany, which did nothing to ease the pressure on Poland, and the British conducted some limited aerial bombing in the Rhineland. But then the hammer fell. On the 17th of September, the Soviets summoned the Polish ambassador in Moscow and informed him that because the Polish government had ceased to exist, which was a lie, and in order to protect Polish citizens of Ukrainian and Belarusian descent living in eastern Poland, Soviet troops would enter the country to restore order. 35 Red Army divisions... Thank you, Steph. Again, this is Cat in World War. We're learning why the... Why this was a big deal, a uh, window into the twisted Russian minds. They, this is a, a history lesson, um, relevance to why trucks and bulldozers with Z's went to the cemeteries where the victims of the Katyn massacre were buried in Russia. So we're just getting a lesson on what the Katyn massacre was. Invaded, dooming the remaining part of the Polish army resisting in what was called the Romanian bridgehead against the Germans. Plenty of fighting remained, but assailed from east and west simultaneously, the conclusion was never in doubt. The very last Polish unit surrendered on the 6th of October 1939, Poland having suffered over 750,000 casualties. Yeah. Large sections of eastern Poland were now under Soviet occupation. The Soviets captured some 400,000 Polish troops. Some escaped, and 42,000 of Ukrainian or Belarusian ethnicity were released. Some 125,000 were sent to camps run by Stalin's feared secret police, the NKVD. I'm looking even at World War II history differently now. Listen, I've always loved, or I've always loved researching World War II and World War II documentaries, but like, man, 
I need to, we, do you know what I need to do? Do you know what it is? Is I'm like, I focused on Germany's role in World War II. We need to focus on what Russia did during World War II, from the beginning to the end, even, even before World War II. Repression began at once. Polish law had mandated that every non-exempt university graduate had to serve as a reserve officer in the military. The NKVD used this as an excuse to round up and imprison huge numbers of educated people, claiming they were military prisoners of war, seen by the Soviets as the key to Polish national identity and what they termed the intelligentsia. About 320,000 such people, including graduates, military officers, aristocrats, lawyers, doctors, police officers and clergymen, were deported to the USSR and placed into camps. The driving what is that, dude? force behind this persecution was the head of the NKVD, Lavrenti Beria, who had already conducted years of terror and murder against Soviet citizens. The Poles ended up in a series of camps in the western USSR. Nothing's, Russia hasn't even changed since World War II. They're the Russian Federation now, but they, this is all what they just did to Ukraine three weeks ago. What is it, four weeks ago maybe now? In the meantime, the Germans in their sector of Poland had also unleashed great repression on the Polish people. Why is it that we only hear that part? I mean, I know, I know so much, and that is equally as important as equally as important history. But that's the only history that we really get is what Germany did, to, or the Nazis did to the Pol Poland, and their invasion of Poland. How often do we really get to hear the lesson from what Russia, what Russia did? The Soviets demanded that the imprisoned Poles become pro-Soviet, most of whom refused not unreasonably to do so. Those who exhibited patriotic sentiments were labelled as enemies of the Soviet Union. A decision was now taken to start liquidating the worst of the enemies identified by Beria's NKVD. Stalin and six members of the governing Politburo in Moscow signed an order on the 5th of March 1940 to execute 25,700 Polish nationalists and counter-revolutionaries, as the Polish prisoners were termed. Why? The reasoning was to wipe out the core people who created and maintained Polish culture, to eradicate the people who would resist Stalin the hardest. The killings began after the 3rd of April 1940. 21,857 Polish prisoners, including 14,552 military POWs, being shot at various locations, including Katyn, near Smolensk in Russia. This is at the six-minute mark started at the, in the video. At Katyn, huge numbers of military officers, from generals to captains, were killed, including 14 generals, as well as 200 pilots, 20 professors, 300 doctors and surgeons, and hundreds of teachers, lawyers, engineers, writers, and journalists, up to 12,000 people. The bodies were buried in pits in the forest. And interestingly, the majority of the firearms used by the NKVD were German Walter Model 2 pistols, supplied to the Soviets by the Nazis. Wow. And that was the end of the matter, as far as Beria and Stalin were concerned. The dead at Katyn were just another tragedy to add to all the bloodshed of state murder, the witness millions of Soviet citizens put to death, and the evidence hidden in mass graves all over the country. Mass graves. That was until Hitler tore up his non-aggression pact with Stalin and invaded the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June, 1941. If Hitler didn't do, like, if Hitler didn't do that, you think Stalin would have? You think Stalin would have? I don't know. He had. Oh, dude. Stalin. I didn't. I, I did not even know uh, Russia's role in Eastern. Stalin now became an ally of Britain, transformed into kindly Uncle Joe Stalin, another victim of Hitler's insatiable lust for empire. 
And with the entry of the United States in the war in December 1941, wow, the Soviet yeah. Union became the vital factor in eventual Allied victory over Germany. That's what I'm saying. Like, they could have easily, if Hitler didn't do that, I think maybe Hitler did it. If Hitler didn't do that, and what, Russia could have very well have been in the Axis powers, y'all. They would have been, actually. They would have been Axis powers. The only reason they weren't is because Hitler invaded and then Stalin went and the uh, United Kingdom and us, the United States. For the Titanic struggle on the Eastern Front was tying down at any one time a good 70% of Germany's military power. It is no exaggeration to state that without the USSR's enormous sacrifice, Britain, its empire and dominions, and the United States could not have defeated Germany in Europe and simultaneously dealt with Japan in the Far East. Hitler and Stalin started World War II. I'm thinking what I'm trying to get to is if it wasn't Hitler invading Russia, do you think Stalin would have invaded Germany and tried it just the opposite way? Russia, Germany was moving east, but like... Poland was obviously the breaking point, and those two countries were like together until Hitler like did his did his thing. Russia was Russia or Soviet Union and Stalin. They were that close to being Axis powers if Hitler didn't invade Russia. So for the duration, of he didn't like nationalism, but what if they're total they're not against totalitarianism. His, I mean, they're, no, they're, he doesn't like nationalism, but their version of that, like, but their version of nationalism is different, but it's still nationalism. Even now, so today, Putinism is their very nationalism. Like, they, I don't even know what part of, what, how they're communist at all right now. Maybe their policy, but their actions and their, how they're invading Ukraine and then, Using the propaganda to verify it or solidify their reasoning is nationalist. Interesting. The war, at least, Stalin was one of the good guys, meaning that the Western liberal democracies would turn a blind eye to Stalin's rule, even though it resembled and often surpassed Hitler's Germany for oppression and murder on a grand scale. The exigencies of war created some strange bedfellows indeed. And I don't even know if, like, that massacre, like, at the time, did that, was that even known? Was that massacre even known by the West? Or did, and did it go ignored? Thank you, Leah. Anyway, the Polish government in exile in London naturally wanted to know what had become of its missing citizens, remembering now that the free Polish forces raised in the United Kingdom were fighting on the same side as Uncle Joe. Interestingly, the Soviets had even signed an agreement with the Polish government in exile to create a Polish army from POWs the Soviets had taken in 1939 and held now in camps in order to help the Red Army on the Eastern Front. Stalin had a face-to-face -face meeting with General Sikorsky, Poland's prime minister in exile, and basically explained the missing Soviet citizens as having become lost in the bureaucracy of his huge country. A sort of accounting error, but assuring Sikorsky that all was well. By now, the area of Smolensk was under German occupation. The Polish Home Army, the enormous resistance organization within occupied Poland, received reports from Polish railway workers who were performing forced labor for the Nazis of secret mass graves in the Katyn forest. The Germans also got wind of this story. In March or April 1943, not long after the surrender of the 6th Army at Stalingrad, Germany's greatest Eastern Front calamity, the Germans decided to investigate. What the Germans uncovered was astounding. Almost 12,000 decomposing corpses dressed in winter uniforms with their identity documents and personal effects still present. The fucking Nazis found it, dude? Yo, what? The Nazis did the investigation? You guys understanding the hatred for, like, anything? Oh, my God, dude. So the Nazis are like, oh, okay, we took an L? Bet. We'll show you the war crimes that you guys did. The, the Nazis did those? 
German propaganda ministry director, Dr. Oh Josef my Goebbels. god, dude, history is just fucking... And then he ate it up, of course. ...realized the potential of the story at yes. once. Soviet barbarism for all the world to see. He knew that such a heinous crime would shock public opinion in Britain uh, and America, and perhaps cause a rift in the alliance with the Soviet Union, to Germany's obvious advantage. You have to remember that Katyn was investigated so thoroughly by the Germans, not out of any sympathy for the Poles. No, no, for, against, oh my god. The Germans had already killed hundreds of thousands of Polish citizens by this time, carrying out massive shootings, herding hundreds of thousands of Jews into ghettos, and then shipping them east to special camps. German outrage was simply a manufactured move to sow dissension in the Allied camp. The Germans created the Katyn Commission in collaboration with the International Red Cross. The what? Germans wanted to make the investigation completely transparent. They collaborated with the Red Cross? Are you kidding me? This was real? Yo. They collaborated with the Red Cross. That's why people don't fucking like the Red Cross. Are you kidding me? The Allied camp. The Germans created the Katyn Commission in collaboration with the Inter Katyn Commission. Formed in April 1943 under request by Germany to investigate the Cat Massacre of some 22,000 Polish nationals during. Investigation was led by world class pathologists. The commission concluded that the Soviet Union was responsible. They were. <laughs> they worked with the Nazis, dude. Members. The, a Romanian doctor of medicine, a Dutch entomatist, a Czech professor, a Bulgarian professor, Croatian professor, someone from the University of Geneva, from Budapest, Naples, from Italian Finnish pathologist, Danish expert in forensic medicine, and Slova, Slovak professor in pathological anatomy. Can't believe they're not. Wow. The commission concluded that the Soviet Union had been responsible for the massacre. Consequently, the German government made an extensive reference to the massacre in its own propaganda to attempt to drive a political wedge between the allies of the World War II alliance. The severing of relations between the Polish government and exile in the Soviet Union was a direct result of the Polish support for the investigation. Dude, what a shitty position that to be in, dude, to have to like support an investigation of that the Nazis were doing, and then people did. Dude, who doesn't have a crooked past? International Red Cross. The Germans wanted to make the investigation completely transparent so that they couldn't be blamed for perpetrating a cover-up of a crime that many suspected they had in fact committed. Forensic surgeons from Germany, Belgium, Bulgaria, Croatia, Denmark, Finland, France, Hungary, Italy, the Netherlands, Romania, Switzerland and Slovakia formed the Katyn Committee, the Germans even bringing in allied POW doctors and surgeons as witnesses to the exhumations. including British, American, and Polish officers. The German press naturally had a field day. The Soviet reaction was a blanket denial. It was German propaganda. They had killed these Poles after the invasion of the USSR in 1941. General Sikorsky was not dissuaded from trying to uncover the truth. Sikorsky's probing caused Stalin to break off diplomatic ties with the Polish government in exile in London. 
Further damage to Allied relations were averted by Sikorsky's extremely convenient death in a plane crash at Gibraltar on the 4th of July 1943. When the Soviets recaptured Smolensk and the Katyn forest area in October 19... Realize that commission was in 1943, so that was true. This was like... Oh my goodness. ...the NKVD began a massive cover-up operation. Physical evidence was destroyed, witnesses intimidated, and a Soviet commission decided that the Poles had been shot by the Germans in the late summer of 1941, while the Poles were being used for forced labour. American and British journalists generally reported that they believed the Soviet story, but some had misgivings. From the evidence of meetings between... Po oh my god, imagine trying to... Oh my god, imagine being a journalist back then. Oh my god, dude. Hell no. Nah. Because like, of course, like, who's gonna wanna, who's gonna want, like, at that time, you gotta realize the mindset. Like, who's gonna wanna take the German position here, or who's gonna wanna, or who would publicly be like, you know what? I think the Nazis are onto something. Who would publicly say that at the time? Like, the, even saying that now would be like, oh my dude. And like they and they they did a serious investigation of it, and it was a legitimate investigation. And but like, uh Polish leaders and Churchill, it was clear that the British Prime Minister believed the Soviets were responsible for Katyn. But the maintenance of the alliance with the USSR in the prosecution of the war against Hitler trumped the dead poles in the forest. British intelligence agents who tried to warn the British government about what actually happened were sidelined or removed. U.S. POW doctors who had been present at the exhumation of the corpses at Katyn reported to the State Department that the Soviets had been responsible. They cited the following evidence. The corpses were all dressed in winter clothing, but the Soviets insisted the men had been shot in the high summer of 1941 by the Germans. No records, identification papers or letters were found on the corpses dated later than spring 1940. The good condition of their clothes and boots indicated that they had not been prisoners for very long. These reports were suppressed and made top secret. Again, America needed the Soviets in the fight against Hitler. Literally. Uh. The Katyn Forest Massacre was placed on the indictment against German war crime suspects at the Nuremberg Trials. The Soviets pushed hard for this, but US and British judges dismissed the charges through lack of evidence. From the 1950s to the 1980s, various attempts were made in Poland to establish the truth, but the communist regime there always quashed such attempts for obvious reasons. It was only in 1989 the Soviet academics finally admitted that Stalin had Thank you for that, Josh. indeed ordered the Katyn massacre. In 1990, Soviet Premier Mikhail Gorbachev named the NKVD as a responsible organization for the massacres. In 1990, President Boris Yeltsin ordered the transfer of many documents pertinent to Katyn from Russia to Poland. A huge Russian investigation eventually clarified exactly what had happened, but many volumes of documents still remain classified. No one has ever stood trial for Katyn. Why did they do that, though? Why did they publicly admit it finally with Gorbachev and then... And by now everyone involved must be dead. And it was only in 2010 that the Russian parliament officially admitted that Stalin and Beria were responsible for the massacres. It was the same year that the Polish president and 95 Polish politicians, high-ranking army officers and their staff were killed in a plane crash on their way to a ceremony in Russia marking the 70th anniversary of the Katyn massacre fueling conspiracy theories that echo those that still surround the death of Prime Minister Sikorsky in a plane crash in 1943. What? There is a... what? Stalin and Beria were responsible for the massacres. 
It was the same year that the Polish president and 95 Polish politicians, high-ranking army officers and their staff were killed in a plane crash on their way to a ceremony in Russia marking the 70th anniversary of the Katyn massacre, fueling conspiracy theories that echo those that still surround the death of Prime Minister Sikorsky in a plane crash in 1943. Thanks for watching. No one to stand trial. So this is so that was and that was an extended history lesson on the cat massacre. I now feel like I have a million more questions after watching that, and I don't understand anything anymore. The more I watch, the further I'm just like, bruh. So now let's bring it back to present day. Now you guys just watched that, and the reason we watched that was because trucks and bulldozers with Zs that pulled up to cemeteries where victims of that cat and massacre are buried in Russia. They use loudspeakers to announce that they could demolish the graves, but they won't because they are good. Naturally, they purported a revisionist propaganda about the 22,000 murdered Polish POW saying that they are willing to ignore the issue of who really killed the Poles and under what circumstances, insinuating that it was the Nazis after all and not the Soviets. Ноль к мемориалу Катынь, где похоронены польские офицеры, которые по официальной версии расстреляны в 1940 году органами НКВД, подошли две колонны тяжелой строительной техники. Колонны выстроились у въезда и выезда на территорию мемориала, после чего два ковшовых погрузчика подъехали к надписи Катынь и продемонстрировали намерение осуществить ее снос. Затем мимо надписи проехала вся техника в количестве 30 единиц. Примерно в это же время в соцсетях было распространено обращение. От имени смолян и всего народа России мы обращаемся к простым польским людям, так как польским политикам, помешанным на русофобии и потворствующим нацистам 21 века, обращаться бессмысленно. Мы находимся под Смоленском, на Катанском мемориале. Это место священное для многих поляков. Здесь похоронены предки некоторых из вас. Мы сейчас не будем разбираться, кто в действительности и когда расстрелял здесь польских солдат и офицеров. Но мы хотим заявить, что мы уважаем ваше захоронение, ваши святые. Yes, multiple things are true, though. It's not like you you can just like summarize it up to being like, well, you know, the Allies needed Russia, but it's like peel the layers back further, and it's like Russia and Germany were the reason World War II started. Very, and after I mean, I'm gonna watch more, and we'll watch even more, but. Russia was damn near an Axis power, and if Hitler didn't invade, they might as they could have been. They it, Stalin needed the now what's the now what's known as or the Allied powers at the time just as much as we did. It was a we need each other situation. Let's continue on. Oh, my computer's being new laptop for sure. I gotta get a new one, y'all. All right see any footage that we might have missed during that. Embassy of France returns to Kyiv. French embassy returns. Uh, en Ukraine, qui, uh, était parti, uh, There's a huge... Okay. There's a huge column of smoke in one of Kyiv's districts. People heard what sounded like an explosion. Okay, 27 minutes ago in Kyiv. Might have some breaking news to cover for the first time in almost 60 or 55 days. Reports of an explosion and smoke scene in Kyiv. Oh, 28 minutes ago in Kyiv. They're censoring whole buildings now. They're censoring the skyline. Oh, so they don't know where the, they don't know where in the city this is. Wow. I'm streaming from Grand Rapids, Michigan. So this is in Kiev. Last night, air raid sirens in Lviv.
Unfortunately, we don't have live feeds anymore. Yeah, I'm in a hotel, y'all. Yeah, I'm in I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Right? Yeah, I'll, I'll just show y'all really quick. Put pause from Ukraine. It's only like a, a little over a minute video, but just to let you guys know why I'm here and if you're interested in tuning in. I told y'all I do do my own reporting. I don't just source news like I am here and reacting to it. If I had the resources and ability to go to Ukraine, I would have been. That offer that Kimmel made to Michael Tracy was a really good offer. Wish I could have taken it. How many people are reacting to this one? Only nine. But here I was in uh, Grand Rapids. Live, I was live today, Grand Rapids, Michigan, on Facebook and YouTube. Here's the. Here's the video from today, and I messed up. I, I totally put 2020, and I goofed bad, but it's too late. This definitely should be 2022. All right, just to give you guys some background really quick of this. Local activists and community leaders gathered today in Grand Rapids, Michigan, to demand justice and accountability for the police killing of Patrick Leoya. Patrick Leoya was fatally shot by Grand Rapids officer April 4th after a struggle with the officer's taser. The officer said he pulled Leoya over for a traffic stop, starting that his stating that his, his license plate wasn't registered to the vehicle. Leoya was driving the vehicle, exited, and initially interacted with the officer. Police state that Leoya then tried to flee the scene uh, once he realized he was going to be arrested. A fight ensued, and the officer eventually got Leoya pinned to the ground, face down, and shot him in the back of the head. Leoya's father, Peter, disputes that the shooting began with a traffic stop. He believes his son was pulled over to the curb due to his vehicle making suspicious noises and a squad then approaches. So we watched the, we went through the video. If you guys want to find the video, it just search Patrick Leoya. But we went through it and I'm here in Grand Rapids covering the protests around that. So here's just a short one and a half minute video about that. Yeah, and this is supposed to be 2022. It was today. I messed this up. Did I switch it? It's in here. Did I switch it over? Nope. Um, I don't have my thing with me. All right, let's start it again. This is in Grand Rapids, Michigan. As we come back to present time, as we come back to our sales. We're showing these people what our democracy looks like. We live here. Yes. We eat here. We sleep here. We, it's the reason, the very reason why these buildings are up is because of us. Yes. Who's city? Our city. 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 Oh, the officer did not get arrested. The, the name hasn't even been released. So that's going on in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'll be live uh, with that at 5 p.m. or well, 4 p.m. Central. All right. Live out there at 4 p.m. Central if you guys want to watch it live. I do. I will make a video and post a video afterwards kind of showing a summary. But I was live for quite some time. I was out there. Told you I do my own reporting, too, when I can. But we were out there. Definitely tune in. Killed in Kenosha. Beyond.
That's me talking. So live and live on Facebook and YouTube, you guys can tune in tomorrow. I'll be live out here. All right. So back into Ukraine now. This was confirmed geolocation. For what? Russian missiles hit the depot of Nova Poshta in Mykolaiv. Three employees were wounded. Mykolaiv's over here. Go. Oh, come on, brain. Where is it? There it is. Oh my goodness. I was drawing a blank. My bad, chat. Right here. Here's Mika Live. Slightly northwest of Kirsten. So this hit, was this last night? Oh, it doesn't give a date. We'll be in Lansing, Michigan at noon. Apparently, there's a vigil. I'm going to go check it out. And continuing on. I want to find more about Lviv and Kiev right now. What do we have here? Defenders of Ukraine on the southern borders are intensively training to repel the enemy infantry exercises, defense, offensive, coordinated actions of the unit in urban areas. Daily combat training supports the fighting and determined mood of the soldiers. This is coming from the Defense of Ukraine official account. Okay, also take a moment and like the video if you guys haven't. Make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Shout out to all of our members of the channel. Thank you to everybody that sent super chats and super stickers during this. That blast area clear. Чимося кожен день в полі, в землі, в урбанізованій місцевості, в все можливих місцях, де може бути зустріч з противником. Oh, I wish I got to use that weapon. It's a machine gun. Я був кулеметником у складі підрозділу. Знищили піхоту уявну. Відпрацьовуємо, готуємося, досконалюємо кожен день свої навики. Бойко! Бойко! До бою! Відділення до бою! До бою! Орієнтир 4, знищити ці. Проводимо злагодження до певного рівня, який зможе виконувати завдання вже за подальшому завдання за призначенням в зоні бойових дій. Wow, they have MG 42s out there, dude. Dude's carrying an MG 42. We're ready, bitch. So at least they're. I mean, that, this range. At least their ranges are. I mean. They have a range. They're doing their thing out there. It's looking like John Wayne with his un, 
unbuckled chin strap, but you know, other than the MG42. All right. Continuing on here. I gotta check Rob Lee. What do we got here? Chechens from yesterday's operation. Geo confirmed. Kadriov Chechens fighting in Mariupol, targeting two buildings in the direction of Azov Stol. Next to us, a BTR. Next to us. Okay, watch the video and then look at the the geo location. Video first. <laughs> There's the BTR engaging. Yeah, this is in Mary. This is Mary Upol. But I was just gonna like, dude is out here in a soft cap. Like, come on. Wow, this is Mary. This is just, come on. This where is he? Not that one. This guy. What is he doing? Out there in a baseball hat. He just chilling. Look at this guy with a baseball hat on. This is the, this is the Chechens, the Chechen fighters in in Mariupol. Again, Mariupol is the southeastern port city. Apparently, they're taking like one house a day, one residential one residential piece a day. The Russian Ministry of Defense claimed control over the Lichia metallurgical plant in Mariupol 21 hours ago. So Russia claimed control of this plant. So he's camping. <laughs> Look at how destroyed everything is, dude. Just it's literally, it's literally just a, a war zone right now. I mean, just there's no, there's not barely any residential, or there's some civilians I've seen in videos, but it all looks like this here in Mariupol. What is he even shooting at, honestly?
He's what is he doing? I just noticed this guy too. You know what? A lot of this to me from the Chechens now after watching these these type of videos where you just see them shooting. Like they are likely in a location and their job is to just take videos like this. And like just shoot their weapons and shoot and look like they're fighting the enemy. This is clowning. This dude's smiling over here. They're not even fight. They're not even shooting anything. Like this thing's hitting this spot. This thing hit us like right here. They're hitting the building over here. I mean, we haven't even. We've never in these videos that that they keep posting that Kadriov keeps posting. Like you never see them taking return fire. Or they never like right here, like where you never see them like having to do tactical bounding or like the as if the enemy's fighting them. Where is this part of Mariupol? The tank that we saw between the two buildings was in this part of Mariupol to the eastern part of the city. Now where is this? All right, near it. So this is where Kadriov's unit is then. They're in this region. So the, the tank video between the two buildings was here. The, the Kadriov's unit's in here to the east. This is where the Kadriovites are, the TikTok army. That tank that we saw at the beginning of the stream, and I'll play it again. That, that's in here. Or, excuse me, here between these two buildings. And then this is taking place here. The BTR is shooting on this side of the building here. It's shooting this way. And where is it? Right here. This building that you see right here. Oops. No, oh, too far. Right here. This building you see here thank you coach brian thank you thank you and the btr down here is this building right here this is that main street so I'll zoom out mariupol kadriov's units in here the residential area so they are going like apartment to apartment but it still doesn't look like they're shooting anything hold on where's one no 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 you guys like you think i'm kidding where is it do i have instagram logged in i hope i do Yeah. Ah, oh, damn it. Please be automatic. Ah, oh, man. One second. Let me type that. Let me get logged into my Instagram first because Rob posted a video from Chechens too. How many of you guys are tuning in from real quick? What city, what state, where in the world are you guys tuned in from? Where are you guys watching from? I get logged into Instagram quick. Probably should have checked my laptop to make sure I was logged into all this stuff. We got Portville, New York tuned in. Welcome, Bikini Bottom in California. How you doing, Quebec, Canada, Louisville, Kentucky? Welcome. God dang it. You have to be this way. Maybe Instagram's on here. 
Why can't I just have everything from home with me? I'm surprised this mic is still alive. It's old enough. Hello from Albany, Oregon. Welcome. How you doing? North Queensland, Virginia. Why are you like this? Ooh. Okay. Let me. Oops. Ah, fuck. And I just closed YouTube out. Sorry, and I swore too. Yeah, I swear. What time is it? Two in the morning here. Nice. I slept for 12 hours yesterday, though. I slept from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. So I did get plenty of sleep. About an eight and a half hour drive here to Grand Rapids from Minnesota. Let me get this pulled up. Yes, I'm streaming from the hotel. Yes. Yep, that's why I sound funny. Uh, the microphone sounds different, and obviously this isn't my room. It's a hotel room. What am I now? Instagram. The journey to get logged in. Aloha from the middle of the Pacific. Welcome. Thank you so much, Lynette. Also, make sure you guys have live chat turned on on your chat options. All right, we're good to go. I'm going to have to switch over the source. All right, got it pulled up. Welcome. All right. Follow me on Instagram if you guys haven't. I also did a stream on Instagram after the protest today. Ironically, this is Rob from Speak the Truth's Instagram page. Um, but he shared a video of the Chechens today that you guys need to see. Thank you, Serendies77. Thank you, Andy, for your absolute dedication to sharing the truth and keeping us well informed. We appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah. This is more video from the Chechens. Rob said peak performance. Again, Rob's a veteran, too. Okay, that's loud. They're literally just, like, they're not shooting at anything. Look at this, he's just, this is for videos. Hadriav unit. Where are they getting the, the ammunition to do this? He's posted a bunch of that didn't even flinch, he said. Oh, from this one. Uh, follow me on Instagram, though, y'all. Here it is. There we go. Follow me on Instagram. I went live, and I'll do a, I'll do a safety meeting. Safety meeting discussion. All right. Speaking of Rob, we can just hop into Rob. Up into Rob's video. But follow me on Instagram, you guys, for more QA type live streams. I'll more like personal streams with you guys. Yeah, they're clowning for real. All right. Update from speaking of Rob's Instagram. Here's his YouTube channel, Speak the Truth. We've been watching it since the beginning. He's an army sniper, provides military analysis and uh, map updates based upon news location, geolocation that we're looking up, like he's doing what we're doing. Plus he also has contacts in the Ukrainian military too. So, all right, here's Rob from Speak the Truth. 
How are you guys doing? Welcome over here to the channel. If you guys are new, do yourself a favor and hit that subscribe button. So I'm going to tell you guys right now, there's a video. A lot of people in the comments have been asking how they can support this channel. Is there any way to do it, like merch and all that? I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm not going to set up a Patreon or nothing like that, but I did set this up. If you guys want to check something out, it'll be linked right here. You guys can see this is join now. So a lot of these videos we do on YouTube are not monetized. It takes days for them to get monetized. They all got to be real. Yeah, that's the other thing too. I mean, if you want to on his, but ours as well. That's the way to support. I have to turn off monetization on every single stream. I don't, we don't have ads or anything on these ones because of the nature of the content. But definitely consider joining the channel, y'all. Join the Mercado Media. Do me a favor, just click the join now down there. I made it as cheap as I possibly can. It's the cheapest that YouTube will allow me to make it. So hey, if you want to support the channel and us continue to make this content, please do so by doing down there. That's, that's pretty much that. We're not going to sell merch or hats or anything like that. This is the way you can if you would like to support us over here. So there you go. So I have redone this entire map. All right. This entire map has been redone. I'm going to tell you right now, a little bit frustrated this morning. I redid it. And then erased all of it. So I wasted about an hour and a half of my life that I'll never get back. But here you go. This one I spent a little bit more time on. As you can tell, look at this thing. It is big and beautiful. All the way through, all the lines connect. They've been bothering me for quite a, quite a long time. All the lines never connected. Here's over Mick Alive. You can see the little areas. These little blue ones you guys see right here, just like that. Those are going to be your slight... Uh, I, I'm not going to say slight resistance areas, but smaller force of Ukrainians. And then over here, of course, you guys do know these are going to be heavily, heavily fortified positions. And of course, the red area is controlled by the Russian military. So all the way through here, oh yeah, you got these areas, which are the troop buildups. And then I put these gray circles, as you guys can see, these are going to be the key, key areas that Russia needs to take to actually change um, change the, the, the course of this, this, this war. So these are very crucial areas. You can tell there's a lot of roadways going in and out of them. There are also areas... Uh, Ukraine needs a hold. So vice versa. Those gray areas are very, very important. So there's another one of these troop buildups right there. I also annotated, which is a new new thing. So I put the logistical hub Kupiansk on this uh, on this map. And also this dotted black line you see going into Russia, that is the train route. So that is the train, the supplies that can come in on this northern side to that, that logistical hub of Kup Kupiansk. So the black lines, of course, are the uh, route. So hopefully you guys like it. There's a little bit going on inside of this area. Uh, it's mainly just in this eastern, northeastern side, and then, of course, in Mariupol. All right. Love it. Love it. Hope you guys do, do enjoy these maps. Cause How are you doing, Alberta, Canada? Yeah, he has the best maps. In fact, before I, before I moved, and my channel was a little bigger, <laughs> and the viewers were a little more, but I was getting his, he was emailing me his maps. So I got to reach out to him again and see if he'll do that, but we'll see. But I was good. He was emailing me the new maps. He definitely does have the best ones. God, they take a lot if of time. If I had more, if I had more time or like more people on the team, I would, we would be putting our own maps up, but I just like don't have the time. We use a live UA map. The do. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and start this video off with a little bit of a, I don't know, I like kind of like the laughing one. I can get you guys off in a good mood. So here's a, here's a quick video of how Russians managed to cross a simple bridge crossing. It's, it is what it is. Короче, непонятно сейчас, что будет. На вот по этому мосту нужно будет переправиться туда. Уже один конец стал. With this channel, we like to talk about Ukraine and everything that's going on in the world that has to do with, with conflicts, I guess you would say. Israel has now successfully tested a new iron beam laser interception system. This thing is insane, by the way. This is, we're in 2022. This is nuts. This stuff's out there. It's the world's first energy-based weapon system that uses a laser to shoot down incoming UAVs, rockets, and mortars that cost $3.50 per shot. Oh my God. Uh, here's a quick video from it. Uh, the demonstration is it's extremely impressive. So shortly I've edited yesterday's video. So after I edit this thing, uh, there's always stuff that comes out and changes. You guys do know. What was that? What just happened? Wow. It's part of it. Just hold on. Was that part of the... Did it just, did he do the video like this? Okay. You can't be doing that. Oh, I just had a safe, I just had a little safety meeting. I just, I thought my video just got hacked for a second. What happened? What kind of transition was that? What kind of transition was that, Rob? From it, uh, the demonstration, it's, it's extremely impressive. So shortly I've edited yesterday's video. So after I edit this thing, uh, there's always stuff that comes out and changes. You guys do know. <laughs> 
Just starts it. All right. Why was there why was there ibex in the video why did they focus on the ibex on the mountain All right, y'all, that's it. That's the whole stream. Have a good night. Take care. Totally kidding. Totally kidding. So shortly, I've edited yesterday's video. So after I edited this thing, uh, there's always stuff that comes out and changes. You guys do know the, the ship that they had shot. They actually hit them with two Neptune. I don't know. I held up three fingers there, but two Neptune missiles. And they did sink that ship. It was on its way to port. And, in, and it's sunk in bad weather and whatnot. I do expect Russia to take a drastic measure when it comes to 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 answering back with this. And they did hit Kiv pretty hard. They hit Mick alive over the night. And I will say, um, this is the largest loss they've suffered since World War II. I mean, they had 500 men aboard the ship. They claim that they did uh, extract them all, but we haven't seen like incoming videos of this. So I, I'm going to say that that is not going to be the case. The Pentagon said that they actually watched the ship sink and they watched them offload some men but there's no way that they offloaded all 500 of them so it's no, like what do you think what do you guys think the the crew are Hold on let's do a poll okay where is rest of russian crew Hold on One second, we're doing a poll. Um, two. Five hundred of them are like missing, so. Um, oh, oh, it is funny. You're having drinks in Moscow. Really? Hold on. Last option. There we go. I had to think of another option. All right, poll's coming up. Here we go. I want to know where you guys think the rest of the crew is. Like I said, while I was being sunk in a bad storm, as a lot of you guys do know, Russia is also claiming that it destroyed a factory inside of Kiev that makes anti-ship missiles after confirming its flagship vessel has been sunk. I don't know how much I believe this because I've not seen video proof and or any actual evidence of this happening. They did hit the outskirts of Kiev. I do know that that is a thing, but I don't know if they hit a, a missile anti-ship missile factory. So I don't think that's a thing. I think they just use this to kind of like bolster their image and, and more of a propaganda thing. So we'll see here in the next 12 hours or so. There might be something that comes out. I could be wrong. Could already could be out there. But as I'm filming this, it has not been confirmed. All right. Russia is doing more of their warning. So they warned the U.S. and NATO once again that there could be unpredictable consequences if they continue to send Ukraine sensitive. The ship identifies as a submachine, as a submarine now, y'all. Yeah. Right? Okay. 
weapons as it prepares to launch a massive ground force offensive in the eastern side of Ukraine. For anyone thinking that this conflict is even close to being ending, like anytime soon, by the way, you need to rethink this because the Secretary of State, along with European allies, have stated they do not believe that there is a short-term end in sight. Listen, we've already, we got it already. In terms of we don't need the, that was by accident. I didn't do that on purpose. That was accident. Any of the governments to tell us that we've been so they're doing the exact same type of a war they've been doing. This is going to go for a while. Unfortunately, we're going to be sitting here covering this for a, a good while and, and anytime soon for this war, and it could easily go beyond 2022. Russia is now preparing for uh, to publicly call its military operation a war. And one of the reasons for this would be so they can activate their reserve personnel and conscripts to fight in Ukraine. Right now, we all know it's a special military operation, so they cannot bring in all these reserves and conscripts. But if they change it to a war, in which a lot of indication that I believe that's going to happen, which we'll show you here in a second, they can do that. All right, so the big bear himself, old Russia, decides it wants to poke even another country right in the side once again, Japan. I still don't believe that Russia could fight a two-front war. I don't know why they keep doing this. Anyway, they decided to, to apparently take two of their submarines from the Pacific Fleet, test fire caliber cruise missiles from an underwater position in the waters of the Sea of Japan. Now, just listen to this. It gets even crazier. There was more than 15 vessels from the fleet were a part of this drill, and they successfully targeted a mock enemy. Just so everyone is aware, the current situation in the area with these tests, when they took place, the USA, yeah, excuse me, the USS Abraham Lincoln Carrier Strike Group is conducting bilateral operations with Japan Maritime Self Defense Force in the Sea of Japan. So inside the same sea, they shot these ballistic cruise missiles, or caliber cruise missiles, excuse me, at the same time we were there and Japan was there. Tokyo has also stated that Moscow was urged to uh, urged to refrain from any actions that could increase tension in Northeast Asia. I don't know what they're doing. We're, we're talking about they're literally test firing cruise missiles, ballistic or caliber cruise missiles at the same exact time. One of our like we're there. What is what are they doing? This is a massive show of force. Uh, let's see if you start. The they're, they are testing. They're poking the bear, too. Part even more, by the way, just going to throw this out there. Let's stir that pot. Just get it going. Get the worldly pot going. China is going to be hold a large scale Navy drill around Taiwan right now as a U.S. delegation is on the island. Boom. Yes. What is going on right now? We're taking a big, just, just, just stirring this pot right now. This stuff is getting crazier and crazier by the day. Russia has also increased the amount of aircraft it's sent near the Polish airspace. Not to mention... The other thing too, if you're just hearing that, Poland and, excuse me, Poland, Finland and Sweden are joining NATO. So Finland and Sweden have had a non-military pact with each other to not join NATO. So like they've kind of been like alone or been doing their own things, Sweden and Finland. And now in the coming weeks, yes, weeks, both of them are going to join NATO. And Russia's already said that we need to if that happens or when that happens, uh, we need to restore the balance or even even the balance. And they're moving troops to the Finnish border. <clears throat> right? This is Russia. Here's Finland. Russia's moving troops here. Because in the coming weeks, these two countries, Sweden and Finland, which by the way, Sweden's military and Finland's military, like if Ukraine can hold off, this is the military of Russia. Dude, it's like, yes, if they join NATO and Russia invades, like that's an act on NATO. And then obviously every country in NATO has an obligation to act. But like that, Sweden and Finland's military are capable of more than capable. It's it's how how much is Russia going to escalate? How much are they going to escalate? Because their military is terrible. Definitely not good. Definitely not good stuff happening around the world right now, y'all. Yeah. It's not. Like, I try, like, let's try to find puppy videos to watch at the end of my streams from now on or something. I'm not kidding. It's getting to that point. They have been sending SU-35s, SU-27s, making 29s from Belarus, causing NATO pilots to scramble two to three times a day right now. So they're literally just going right on the border of that Polish airspace and coming right back every single time, every single day, two to three times a day, just stirring it up. Oh, man. Tony, you guys. We're just taking the, they're just taking a big cauldron with a big pot in the ladle and they're just doing this. I guess you don't know if you stir with a ladle. 
think you just scoop with a ladle, but like a wooden spoon. Kind of like that witch inside of Cinderella. That wasn't Cinderella. Sleeping Beauty. Yep. Russia has used a long-range bomber for the first time of this war and struck Mariupol. Two Russian strategic heavy bombers, Tu-95-160s, launched cruise missiles for the first time. They used armed aggression bombs that were actually dropped from a tu 22 M3 hitting Mariupol. That is the first time this has happened. It actually came out from Ukrainian sources. I first saw it on Russian uh, networks, and now I have seen it there. Russian forces opened fire and two buses full of evacuees as well. Seven people were killed. Another 27 were wounded as the buses traveled near the village of Boran, which is close to the contested city of Izium. So that one is terrible, but that is something that happened. I don't really know exactly why they would do that. I'm sure these, these vehicles were fully written on the side that says, don't, don't shoot at me. I, I, I just can't believe that. So this is another big deal. God, there's so much going on. President Zelensky has made a direct appeal to President Biden of the United States, of course, to designate Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism, which would, which is which is one of the most powerful and far-reaching sanctions the U.S. can actually do. Designating Russia as a state sponsor of terrorism is a powerful, a powerful play for for a few different reasons. One, economic penalties are massive, ma way bigger than what they've done so far. I mean, look at uh, currently there's only four countries that are underneath this umbrella, I guess you would say, that are counted as state sponsors, North Korea, Cuba, Iran, and Syria, and look at their economies. Look at them. Big thing here, it would freeze all Moscow's assets inside of the United States and literally cause, like if any country wants to do work with Russia, they'll be hit as well with sanctions. So Wait, well, I thought that was already in, I thought that was already like, oh, if any country does work with Russia, that they also get hit with sanctions. Okay, that's the part. So this is an op. This so, if this is still on the table, then they really haven't done all the sanctions they can do yet. And more sanctions are going to be coming. Literally, it would it would cut them off. What do you guys think? Let's do a serious poll then. That was the one that I have up there. Is kind of a a joke poll. <clears throat> Let's do a serious one. from the entire planet that are underneath this umbrella, I guess you would say, that are counted as state sponsors, North Korea, Cuba, Iran. You think Russia should be counted as a state sponsor of terror? Do you believe Russia is now a state of Error. Cast your vote. Let me know. I'm going to put the I don't know option on there too because if you don't know, that's fine. More people need to say I don't know these days. And then let the people that do know talk. Or, I don't know. There we go. Poll coming up. There we go, coming in hot. There you guys go. Iran and Syria, and look at their economies. Look at them. Big thing here, it would freeze all Moscow's assets inside of the United States and literally cause, like if any country wants to do work with Russia, they'll be hit as well with sanctions. So literally it would, it would cut them off from the entire planet. So lucky for us, Russian main state TV stations have been translated for us with captions. I'm so excited about this. You're about to watch a piece from this and I will play in full so you guys don't think that I'm actually chopping it up, making, try, trying to meet like some type of narrative you may think I have, I don't know. I, I know a lot of you guys know I'm not trying to, to meet some sort of narrative, but you're gonna tell inside of this video, I'm just gonna let, you know, let's go ahead and play it and I'll talk to you here in a second. Важное заявление Министерства обороны Российской Федерации о судьбе крейсера «Москва», на котором случился пожар, речь про флагман Черноморского флота России. Но даже то, что есть посягательство на нашу территорию, есть в казус Белли абсолютный повод к войне, настоящий, без дураков. Не всяких, как это называется? Ну что мы сейчас ведем? Спецоперация России кончилась на специальная военная Украина. операция. Сегодня ночью она кончилась. И она кончилась с тем, когда нападают на нашу на нашу родину с вами. Когда вы говорите ночью кончилась, вы имеете в виду крейсер Москва? Когда вы говорите про войну, вы имеете в виду объявление мобилизации тотальной? Стоп. 
Я не хотел говорить о крейсере Москве, тем более, чтобы были разные, так сказать. Но вы сказали, крейсер Москва – это абсолютное повод для войны, стопроцентный, это флагман наш. И здесь думать нечего, здесь нужна ответка, но какая? Ее нужно придумать. Спецоперация России на Украине. То, во что это вылилось, уже смело можно называть не лукавя, Третьей мировой войной, совершенно точно. Мы прямо сейчас сражаемся, если не с НАТО, то уж точно с инфраструктурой НАТО. И это тоже надо осознавать Соединенными Штатами Америки. Круглосуточно они по железной дороге поставляют оружие, круглосуточно по земле из Польши поставляют оружие. В этом смысле, конечно, не шутка, что надо очень серьезно подумать об уничтожении железнодорожных узлов. Там, конечно, вопросики, они все едут и едут, я имею в виду лидеры. Но лидеров надо предупредить, пусть дома надо сидят. Надо по Киеву, тогда они приедут. Вот что нужно сделать. Вот этого не должно быть никогда. То, что мы сейчас видим на экране. А есть один способ ответить. Бабахнуть один раз и все. So they're calling for an all-out war inside of this, this, this video. Inside, this is playing all over Russia. They're calling for an all-out war. And, and they've been clinging on to this, this special military operation thing for so long now, for, for the last, what, 50 days? And they even called this war in Ukraine World War III because they claim to be fighting against NATO. I can promise you right now, they are not fighting against NATO. They're fighting against weapons that NATO uses, but not NATO forces. And these aren't even our most powerful weapons. So that's another thing that they need to take into consideration when they start calling this thing World War III. They're not doing that though, Robert. <laughs> Rob, they don't care to. They're, they're not, they're purposely not explaining to their people what's happening. They're, they're saying what it is, like that's what it is. They're openly lying to their people and then now they're shifting the narrative slowly to now they're in World War III against NATO and the United States. That's what they're telling their people that they're at, they're, they're blending, they're blurring the special military operation war line now so that way their people become more open to the idea that they're at war. But now they're more at they're at war with NATO. They're in World War III with NATO and the United States. And they haven't felt the whole mighty power of America's military might. I know a lot of people, I know I'm American, I know I'm I'm I bleed red, white, and blue. But I'm being very honest. Our military is extremely powerful. I was in for seven, seven years. I fought in two different wars, and it's been. You know how long it's been? No, it doesn't, a son of God. Which, which government? Unless you're not from the United States. Unless you're not from the United States. And since I fought in a war 10 years. 10 years. I think I was, I was in Afghanistan. The United States gives people the ability to, I mean, you can watch whatever news you want. You know, the, the, the government isn't taking news companies down. I'm able to exist, y'all. Whoa. Yes, in 12, in 12, yeah, so 10 years. We were so powerful. Have, something, something like me would, I'd be probably thrown in the gulag in Russia for trying to do what I do, or I'd be killed. I don't even try to compare this to the United States is nowhere near, nowhere close to the totalitarianism of Russia. Yeah, we have our own capitalist issues here in this country and issues, of course. I mean, I'm here in Grand Rapids, Michigan for that reason, but Do not compare our media to Russia's media at all. Not even close. Powerful back then. I could not even fathom the kind of stuff that we have now. It would, it, like back then, we had glasses that you could attach, like stuff you would see in a video game. We could literally see a UAV, like when you throw a drone up, like we could, like this was 10 years ago. We had capability of seeing on ground UAV instantly, what they're seeing above, like the kind of stuff that we have is just nuts. But the, what you just saw was, was them literally trying to sell to their civilians to make this look like we are the bad guys here in the West and they get more support for Russia. I get it. It's all propaganda it, it, from both sides. You can see it from the West and from Russia. I try to be as, as much as I can in the middle, but there's so much just ugh, from that side that I have to put it out like that. Like you would never see anywhere here in the West calling for, for this kind of stuff. And, and the crazy part is they got so mad Because Ukraine sank a ship that was that was part of an invading force of their country. You can't hit somebody in the face 
and they get mad when they hit you back. You know what I mean? That's it's not something that's possible. You know, you can't walk up somebody McDonald's, punch them in the face, and they get mad because they just hit you back. I guess this is not a thing. That's Russia, though. That is literally Russia. Somebody walking up to you, hitting you in the face. You hit them back, and then they like act as if you were the aggressor. And like now, everything they do is justified to you again because you hit them back. But it's uh, uh, but their their energy is as is as if, is as if you were the one that hit them. That is Russia, one on one, right there. So here's the final video. This is actually coming out of Taiyum, and I'm gonna show you guys where this is at, though. So this is actually in Russia. This is I actually I mapped it out. It is a forty. 40 hour drive. I don't know why I use Kiev, but it's a 40 hour drive. So there's Tyumen right there. Look at this. Oh yeah, this, this is big. We're inside of Russia. Still backing up here. There's Moscow. Yeah, you guys see that red dot? All right, there you go. Look how far away. This video you're about to see is coming out. It is a massive amount of MLRS is being shipped by train, which is a clear indication that the next phase of the war is getting closer and could be much bloodier. So Russian troops have actually overrun a checkpoint on the outskirts of Marinka. The images you guys are currently seeing from this battle, and I actually have the grid coordinate, which I'm going to show you guys right now. So here is the actual grid coordinate, and from Google, look, look at this, some satellite imagery, we can actually see the trench systems. Look at all the defensive fighting positions right here. Man, I should have screenshot of this so you guys could see them. But look at this right here. Look, you can set these three things right here. Oh, my God. That is crazy. Look at these trenching systems right here. That's the same one that they have actually overrun. And I look it up. It is in Marinka. So let's go ahead and scroll down over here. So it's right here. It's on this main route of N15. So going in. Marinka. On load maps. So it's along the main road. This is Marinka. Into Marinka right there, uh, just outside of Donetsk. This is one of those routes I've been talking about. These these main yellow routes you guys need to pay attention to. These are the ones they need to they need they need to secure to actually make an eastern or excuse me a westernly push through Ukraine. All right, so over time. This is Marinka. <clears throat> I'm not seeing those fighting positions. Oh, Are they in there. That's from 2011. You were there at the Cloverleaf? I'm not seeing the... I must have a different... What the... F Why did it put me down here? One second. How did you do this? Was that the Cloverleaf you said? I must have an older man. This must be old then. Just realized I wasn't live. Yes, just fast forward some. So Russian troops have actually overrun a checkpoint on the outskirts of Marinka. The images you guys are currently seeing. So I go east from here.
Yo, if it keeps doing this, I'm going to get mad. We're back in Mariupol again. Stop. <laughs> Stop this. All right, up here. Said further east. This is the main road. You have to keep going. Oh, here we go. All right, thanks, chat. Thank you, chat. Chat's awesome. Here it is. Of course, from here, you can't see the... They're not... In 2011, those photos were taken. All right, maybe we got to do this. Thought we found it. Thanks, chat. Know where to find it now. Easier. Over here. So these are the trenches. And obviously the picture on the ground is from 2011. But from the sky, yeah. These are the trenches that they have. Trench system. Satellite image is from 2022. Wow. All the way back to here. They have some secondary. They have some secondary stuff set up back here too. Probably like a mortar team. Maybe artillery. Artillery positions back in this part. Some more shit over here. That's definitely like a that's definitely a fighting position over here. Are those some trucks? This is a new fight this is a new satellite imagery. Nothing in that tree line. It all connects down to here. <laughs> Back in the backwoods, rolling one up. <laughs> all on the tree line, yeah. I'm seeing the same thing. What's down here? Oh, some trench. There's some stuff down here, too. That's a trench right here. Where is this? Just south, south, uh, west of Donetsk. Oh, there's Donetsk. Oh shit! Oh, 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 oh! Help! I lost it. Oh, let's get it back. There we go. Definitely got something here. Hard to tell. I could just be regular. I don't know though. That's kind of like off of the. That is that just is that smoke in the satellite? Clouds. I'm trying to see if there's other positions over here. Trees. Definitely all connected to the road, though. Whole lot of fighting positions. Whole lot of fighting positions along that there.
nothing from this battle. And I actually have the grid coordinate, which I'm going to show you guys right now. So here is the actual grid coordinate. And from Google, look, look at this, some satellite imagery, we can actually see the trench systems. Look at all the defensive fighting positions right here. Man, I should have screenshot of this so you guys can see them. But look at this right here. Look, you can set these three things right here. Oh, my God. That is crazy. Look at these trenching systems right here. That's the same one that they have actually overrun. And I look it up. It is in Morinka. So let's go ahead and scroll on over here. So it's right here. It's on this main route of N15. So going into Marinka right there, uh, just outside of Donetsk, this is one of those routes I've been talking about, these, these main yellow routes you guys need to pay attention to. These are the ones they need to, they need, they need to secure to actually make an eastern, or excuse me, a westernly push through Ukraine. All right, so here in Pop Santa, there's another, there's a, there's a Russian source that's actually stating that Russian forces have actually broke through the Ukrainian defenses inside of Pop Santa. I, I haven't seen any other source say this yet, so I don't know if it's, if it's true or not. Uh, but I'm going to say right now, they say that they have taken control of the city council building, which would I have actually indicated right here. You see this red square? I have noted it where it's at. So if they have pushed through there, that means they have. I, I don't know yet. Well, it's not confirmed, but I will say it, it might be true. It may not be. But I just want you guys to know. So right now they're stating that right now they have pushed through the defensive lines of Pop Santa. So we're going to move down to Mariupol. So down over here. Oh, man, this map just looks a lot cleaner. So it is now believed to be confirmed that Russians have taken control of the Illich factory, which you guys see the photos of right now. That's coming from a Russian source as well, but I believe it to be true. So I do want to say it is right now. Look at Rob's map of Mariupol. Where is it? Where is it? It's Rob's map. All this is taken. Minus the minus this spot for where red, which would turn red then if Russia took it. So all this is supposed to be red off of the live UA map. They still hold this and less of that pocket than what we assume. Or what's on the live UA map. There should be more red in Mariupol. I believe to be confirmed that Russians have taken control of the Illich factory, which you guys see the photos of right now. That's coming from a Russian source as well, but I believe it to be true. So I do want to say it is right now. And I and I have annotated here on the map, as you guys can see, this is exactly where that is at. So I'm not going to say it's confirmed until tomorrow when more stuff comes out on it. But right now, they have claimed to also have captured the 36th Brigade Commander while doing so. We know that the Russians stated that they took over a thousand Ukrainians hostages, or excuse me, POWs, I guess you would say, down in this area when in fact it ended up being around 100. So always take with what they say with a grain of salt and fact check and make sure and confirm. So Russian troops have now taken the base. This is this is true. I know this to be true of the National Guard's 12th Operational Brigade inside of Mariupol. The image you guys are currently seeing is coming from a trusted source, and I can verify that that is real. I don't know how long they can hold on the Mariupol. This is, I mean, we've seen this thing shrink and shrink and shrink over time. I don't really know what the outcome could be. I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they can get reinforcements in here to help these guys. I really don't. I don't know what the end result is going to be. God dang. I just, I feel for him. So we're going to end it on this video. This is what it looks like to drive the Mariupol, Mar Mar if you guys want to know. Uh, it has been noted that 95% of the houses within the city have been destroyed. So here is that video. 95% of the houses have been destroyed. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, I hope you guys did enjoy this episode for today. I will. That's Rob. Speak the truth. Hard to get. I mean, dire situation in Mariupol. Definitely. Ministry of Defense update an hour ago. Computer's getting slow now. Getting probably getting hot. Oh yeah, laptop working overtime for us tonight, y'all.
Intelligence update, road infrastructure and conflict ahead, excuse me, in conflict affected areas of Ukraine has sustained significant damage. Russian troops have exasperated this by destroying bridges, employing landmines and abandoning vehicles along key routes as they withdrew from northern Ukraine. The destruction of the river crossings in and around Chernihiv has only has left only one pedestrian bridge in the city itself across the Desna River. Prior to the war, the city had approximately 285,000 residents. Damage to Ukraine's transport infrastructure now presents a significant challenge in delivering humanitarian aid to areas formerly besieged by Russia. So that is the latest update. Wishing you, okay, Team United Kingdom, the best of luck. There is clear evidence that, okay, you know, 25% of Ukrainians have been forced to flee their homes. Let's let's refresh the list. Comment where everybody is tuning in from. I'm, I don't know. I'm not going to make it to three hours tonight, y'all. I'm pretty tired. I was marching and stuff today. I got to march again tomorrow and walk, walk around Grand Rapids. Russia has at least three ships in the Black Sea carrying sea-based cruiser missiles such as the Caliber, despite destruction of cruiser Moskva. Ukraine warns of increased Russian air and missile strikes of two Russian strategic bombers launched cruise missiles into Ukraine. The Russian rocket that was fired this morning at Mykolaiv, the sound you never want to hear and never forget. Wow. So that's what a Russian missile heading to Mykolaiv sounds like. 16 units of equipment, two T-72 tanks, and two self-propelled artillery positions, three grads, and a reconnaissance UAV. What is that about? Okay, so this is from Day 52, the South Front Ukraine coffee time. Russians are desperately trying to gain a foothold and hold their positions on the South Front. They continue to shell Mykolaiv and villages in the Kyrgyzstan region with cluster munitions targeting civilians and infrastructure. So they're making moves on Mykolaiv. Ireland, Houston, Texas, welcome. They're hitting targets in Mykolaiv. That's this city. To the north west of Kyrgyzstan, which is held by Russian forces. They are digging defense positions in the areas of Lubin, Lubin Movka, Petrivka, and Trestanivka and strengthening their forward positions with mobilized reserve units of the 1st and 2nd Army Corps. 16, okay, what is this? Back on. In occupied Kyrgyzstan, people are being brainwashed by Russian propaganda. For example, they are getting told about biological weapons in the form of war geese. What? The mayor of Kiev confirmed explosions. In the Darnitsovit district. Oh, wow. In the aftermath of yesterday's shelling on Kharkiv, 10 dead, including a baby. I don't want to see that. Ten are dead, including a baby.
Alright, this is, uh, oh man, hold on. More from Kirsten. Okay, my computer is getting really, really crabby now. Oh, it's getting hot. Things are lagging. Pushing it to the limit, this laptop. Pushing it to the limit. This was in, this was in Kharkiv. Wow. Air raid sirens in Kiev again a minute ago, y'all. A minute ago. Air raid sirens. There's no live feeds of Kiev at all anymore, huh? They've outlawed all of them. Air raid sirens in all towns and cities of the Venezia region. Ukraine siren alert in Poltava. Air raid sirens in all the towns and cities of Kiev breaking right now. I'm going to retweet that. Air raid alert. So Kiev is in all, you know what I mean? As much as they're saying like, hey, it's like things are returning back to normal. It's like you still got air raid sirens in Kiev. What? Russian tank shelling in apartments in Mariupol. This is video out of Mariupol, southeastern port city. There is a live cam in Kyiv. Send it to our Discord server. Run our Discord. If you guys haven't done so. Don't do this to me. My computer is getting so ah, oh, dude. So my computer is just melting right now. I can't pull up Discord right now. Damn it. Is there a channel? Zabby has a live stream of Kyiv, but no audio. Okay then. Never mind. We need, we need we we would need audio. Guys, did you guys see that? Oh. What is going on right now? Why is the source not, why is it not changing? Yo, the computer is getting hot. It's not even wanting to. What was that? It didn't even switch over the source? Oh my goodness. All right, y'all. I think we might have to end it here soon. Set computer on the AC. And I'm using a laptop, y'all. My computer's hot. Yeah, it's... Oh, man. It's been holding it down and doing a good job.
even with all that music, I'm still like, I don't know who would eat. I mean, obviously, the people that are ignorant to the war would eat that up. Like, oh man, Russia's doing something. Tank shelling an apartment in Mariupol. Saw a lot of interesting recommendations. I mean, it's not a bad laptop, it's just not really built for streaming. It is getting hot though. I need to get a fan attachment or a cooler. Cooling attachment. Let's check Rob Lee and then I think I'm gonna sign off for the night. I'll be back live again tomorrow night though. We'll be back live again tomorrow night and tomorrow. We live in Grand Rapids, of course. UAV footage showing Ukrainian strikes on Russian positions. Music. Okay, I thought I muted it. It's registering my clicks like two seconds after I click. Right, but this one I'm over, I'm taxing it right now. I'm, I'm live streaming, which that causes your computer or your system to get to work regardless. Ukrainian attack on Russian positions. Does it give a location? On, no. On, it just says on Russian positions, so no specific location given. Destroyed Russian T-72B3 tank. All right, hey, let's check the list one more time. And tired. All right, air raid alarms in Sumi. Missile strike in the poultry farm in the in the Dnipro region. So right now there's sirens going off, y'all. Follow our list on Twitter if you guys want to keep up on this. We have 133 people following the list if you're interested, or follow us on Twitter. Hey, right now though. I'm gonna go live on Instagram. We're gonna go. I'm gonna go have a safety meeting Q and A with y'all. Whoever's up, whoever's interested, whoever's interested, follow me on Instagram. All right. Then I'm gonna sign out for the whole night. I'm gonna go live on Instagram for a little bit. Have a safety meeting Q and A discussion with you guys, and then I think I'm gonna call it a night. So join me on Instagram. Follow that page. I'm going to end this stream, go outside and start it up. Do a Q&A, answer any questions you guys might have about me or why I'm in, why I'm in Grand Rapids. Beyond that, you guys have been an amazing audience as usual. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please subscribe to the channel, like the video. Make sure you guys have your notifications turned on. Join our Discord server, the Twitter. Follow all the Mercado Media stuff on Twitter, Facebook, all of the things. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on Instagram if you watch this stream after the fact. Thank you so much. Um, hope to see you guys live tomorrow here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. All right. Hope to see you guys live on the stream. Take care, y'all. See you tomorrow. Have a good one.